Hi everybody, Walesa here. Are you new to DIY and have a project but feel overwhelmed by the process? Today I'm going to show you how simple it can be to make something beautiful by simply using some paint, a roller, and a paintbrush. So stick around for today's transformation. today's project I partner with Beyond Paint all in one. I'm going to be using the furniture cabinet kit that includes the paint color of your choice, a brush, a roller, a paint tray, and a color card. This chest is made out of cedar on the inside and the outside is lined with pine wood veneer that has seen better days. Maybe the flowers used to be trendy back in the day, but definitely not today. By the branding underneath it, we know it was made in 1999 by the Lane Company. Back in 1966, Lane locking latches were recalled due to safety concerns. And since safety comes first, I'm removing the current lock and latch before I even start cleaning. If you're tackling a dresser, cabinet, or buffet, you'll need to remove hinges, latches, or hardware instead of locks before using a degreaser to clean your piece. According to the Lane Furniture website, all Lane cedar chests manufactured after 1987 have been equipped with the upgraded safe lock mechanism. So it looks like I would have been fine. But should you own a cedar chest with the older mechanism, Lane will supply a replacement at no cost. To cover up the gap that the old lock left, I'm using this hand mixable two-part epoxy potty stick that is formulated to repair and rebuild wood. If you want to switch the current hardware on your piece for something more modern that's a different size, this hand mixable two-part epoxy called Quickwood is perfect to cover any screw holes. Once I knead it together and apply it, it takes about 15 to 25 minutes to set in and it has one hour of cure time, then I can sand it, paint it or stain it. While that dries, I'm gonna be cutting some wooden split dowels. I think I know why the previous owner might have added those flowers to the front, because otherwise this chest looks like a plain box. So to add some interest, I'll be cutting and gluing the split dowels to the front. Most likely you don't need to add anything like this to your project, especially if you're a beginner. This is just my personal preference. Okay, I think this repair can definitely look a lot better. And to make that happen, I'm gonna be filling the rest of it using this plastic wood. This wood filler is perfect for any deep or shallow scratches, which the top of this chest has a lot of. After I spread it smoothly, it's gonna take about 15 minutes to dry hard and evenly, and it will sand to a smooth finish. In hopes to make the cedar chest more modern and appealable, I attempted to make a cut that honestly we don't have the right tool to make. So we ditched the idea, we're gonna be adding some modern legs, but for now I'm gonna use this 220 sanding sponge that you can find at any hardware store to smooth out any of the wood filler that was added. Let's do a final rinse using a damp cloth to get rid of any of the dust I just knocked off. I'm gonna be using two different colors from Beyond Paint, and this paint is designed as a paint and primer in one. Usually there is no need to prime, however there are some circumstances in which primer will be needed to prevent bleed through. This is one of those scenarios since I'm painting over knotty pine. These knots have naturally occurring tannins and oils that can soak through the paint. So using an oil-based primer is important, which is why I'm using Bean Why She Lack Primer here, and I'm just spat priming over the nuts. To protect yourself from harsh chemicals, I highly recommend wearing a respirator and working on a well-ventilated area while spraying this product. In case you've never seen bleed through before, here are a few examples. This yellow spot here, this green one over here, still filtering through the first coat of primer, which means I'm gonna need to apply a second coat. Sometimes you might even need a third coat. Just make sure to wait one hour after the final coat before applying paint. First, we're gonna be painting the split wooden dowels using this linen color from Beyond Paint. I'm gonna be completely honest, the consistency and the color are really making me crave some vanilla pudding at this moment. Beyond Paint is a water-based product, so you can easily clean it with soap and water. And there is no need to stir or shake. 
is ready out of the can. As you saw, the consistency of the paint is thick, but you do not need to add any water to it. I'm going to tape off the metal frame to keep the cedar wood paint free. To paint my chest, I'm gonna be using a beautiful black color called licorice. Try to roll out your piece as much as you can and use your chip brush for any area you can reach with your roller. One of the few reasons why Beyond Paint is great for beginners is because it's lightly textured to eliminate brush marks, so it provides a finish that conceals imperfections. The paint flattens out, but you're gonna be left with a texture finish that's similar to a finish on a wall. To paint the trim, I'm using a soft bristle brush and I'm simply mushing or stippling into all the crevices. Smaller projects like the one we're working on today are great pieces to practice and see if you would like tackling your kitchen cabinets or bathroom vanity. Besides wood, Beyond Paint also bonds to metal, formica, laminate, plastic, glass, linoleum, masonry, tile, marble, concrete, or previously painted surfaces. But perhaps the main advantages to new DIYers are that you don't need to strip, sand, and the sealer is already included in the paint, which is gonna save you steps and money. Honestly, the coverage is pretty amazing. You guys saw. I'm gonna show you a close up. Um, this is only after coat number one. There were parts that I know I applied heavily. I could have gone back and smoothed them, but I thought let's challenge the paint. Let's see what it can do so I can show you. Where I left that big glob of paint purposely, I did go back and smooth uh, lightly with a 220 grit, but the rest of the piece I left as it was. I waited a couple of hours, especially because it was very humid out before applying a second coat. And in some parts I needed a third coat, but you saw that there was a lot going on underneath the black, so I'm not surprised. As far as how much paint you could possibly need for your project depends on the size of it. You can purchase Beyond Paint by the gallon, quart, or pint. Personally, it's very upsetting to run out of paint in the middle of the project, so I prefer to have more instead of less. That's why I ended up ordering a quart, and I have more than half left, so I could have definitely gone away by just using a pint. So here is a close-up of that texture that we talked about earlier, right after that second coat. I think you can appreciate it better now that we have full coverage here. Even though it's freshly painted, it's nice and cohesive, and it feels the nicks and dings, but as it dries, once again, it's gonna flatten out even more. One of the most important things for me is to make sure that these paints, even though you didn't sand prior or fully prime, are they still bonding? Can they stand by what they're claimed? So we're gonna do a scratch test at the end and see if the on paint passes. For the final touches, I added these leftover legs that I had from a different project and attached them to the bottom of the chest. Then aligned the split dowels before I taped them and finally glue them to my piece. Keep in mind that Beyond Paint sometimes still sensitive to chipping for that two to three days cure period. Allow to fully cure for 30 days before routinely washing with soap. For full disclosure, the scratch test that you're gonna see was done two days after I painted the piece. So not even after that initial cure period was over. 
Before we go across the finish line, I'm adding a leather pool. That way it's easier to lift the top so you can store pillows or blankets inside. And the very last thing is to refreshen the cedar wood inside with this walrus oil. Let's do a final close up. So you can see the texture that the paint leaves and this is the scratch test it definitely passed i'm pretty impressed now Thumbs let's up. take a final look to where the cedar chest started and this is how our cedar chest looks today let me know what you think of today's makeover in the comments and i will see you guys in two weeks Whoa.